So this is the first of a series of videos on transdermal estrogen in prostate cancer patients. Uh, so the, what do I mean by transdermal? Uh, well, it's a patch that has estradiol, the major human estrogen, impregnated into the patch. You put it on your skin. The estrogen goes from the patch through the skin into the bloodstream. Um, uh, and the patches are available for continuous release over three and a half to seven days. Uh, so it's a very convenient way to get very consistent estrogen levels uh, into men or women. These patches were originally developed for women. The problem with oral estrogen uh, is that when it hits the liver, all the estrogen you take by mouth goes to the liver. And when the high concentration of estrogen hits the liver, all sorts of bad things happen. Uh, the liver produces uh, proteins that cause inflammation and blood clots and all sorts of problems. Uh, and it's not natural. A woman's ovary doesn't secrete the estrogen into the GI tract. It secretes it directly into the bloodstream. So the development of transdermal estrogen patches uh, was done in an effort to deliver estrogen to the bloodstream uh, directly and avoid the liver problem, or at least minimize it. Uh, and indeed, the patches um, uh, seem to be much safer for women than other sources of estrogen. Of course, women have to worry about cancer of the uterus uh, and breast cancer uh, with transdermal estrogen patches. Uh, and most of my patients aren't worried about their uterus, uteruses. Uh, so uh, now, once what the form of estrogen the patches are administering uh, is estradiol, uh, and it's the most active. Uh, one of the major paths for clearance, remember that we talked about clearance in other formats, is the liver converting estradiol to estrone. Estrone has estrogen activity too, but somewhat weaker. Then that gets converted to an inactive metabolite. So if you want to look at the total estrogen, uh, circulating in a man, you measure estradiol and estrone. Uh, and for someone on a patch, that's useful because it, it tells me uh, how successful the patch is in delivering uh, the total estrogen load. Uh, now, the metabolism of estrogen is controlled by many things. Uh, the pathway in the liver that goes from est est estradiol to en estrone is stimulated if you eat a lot of cabbage uh, uh, family members, kale, broccoli, etc. Uh, and so one of the things I can see immediately uh, is if all the estradiol has gone to estrone, uh, I know automatically the patient's probably been eating a lot of cabbage. And since estrone was less active, uh, they're defeating the purpose of the patch. So where does estrogen come to play in men? Well, men, of course, start with testosterone and convert some of that testosterone to estrogen, the action of an uh, enzyme called aromatase. Uh, and aromatase is in a variety of tissues. Uh, for example, uh, in bone, testosterone is converted to estrogen, estradiol, in the bone, and it is that estradiol uh, that causes normal bone. Testosterone itself has little benefit. Uh, so uh, if I put a patient on hormonal therapy, testosterone levels drop. And since estrogen is going to be made from the testosterone, that also drops. Uh, and it is that drop of estrogen, not testosterone, that causes the risk of osteoporosis uh, in men on hormonal therapy. What other roles does estradiol uh, and uh, estrone play in, in male biology? Uh, well, of course, hot flashes. It's the lack of estrogen that causes hot flashes during hormonal therapy. And so if you're able to prevent the estrogen drop, uh, you'll not only reduce the risk of bone loss, but reduce the severity of hot flashes in, in most patients. Uh, a more subtle thing is that you know the adult brain 
uh, renews itself from brain stem cells. It's not a fixed organ. You don't have a set number of neurons and that's it, and you lose some as you age. It's constant renewal takes place. Brain stem cells are stimulated by three things. Using your brain, exercise the muscle and it'll get stronger. Um, exercise, dramatic impact on brain stem cell action. And estradiol enters the brain and stimulates the brain stem cells. Uh, and so uh, another advantage we see in using transdermal estrogen during uh, hormonal therapy is a better support of uh, cognitive function in patients. Uh, since we started to use transdermal estrogen uh, patches uh, in men undergoing hormonal therapy, the danger of osteoporosis has plummeted. In fact, we'll commonly see patients who come in osteopenic and gain bone density during hormonal therapy. What dose of patch do we use? Well, we adjust the patch dose according to the blood level because patients differ in how fast their liver destroys uh, estrogen. Uh, we usually use Vivel dot uh, 0.025 uh, to 0.05 uh, milligram per day patch. The patch change every three and a half days. Competing products are Elora, another three and a half day patch, and Chimera, a seven day patch. Uh, and so this has been a huge plus in terms of quality of life. I can't tell you how many times a patient come to me and said, I'll never go back on hormonal therapy. I was miserable on Lupron. And we put them on Lupron and Extandia and Zytiga and much more aggressive hormonal therapy, and their side effects are less than they were on Lupron because of this effort to, to control uh, side effects. Now, one of the concerns I get from the family doctors and practicing medical oncologists, oh, well, estrogen causes blood clots. There's no evidence for that in men. Uh, it does appear that the estrogen patches are much safer than oral estrogen in women, but there's still some risk of blood clots. But men are women, last time I checked. Uh, and there are two clinical trials that, that have looked at the impact of estrogen skin patches on blood clotting in men. And once this video is posted, uh, I will uh, append uh, citations to those papers. But one was a phase two trial uh, published in 2005 in the journal Cancer. Um, and they used high doses of estrogen much higher than uh, that we use, and they found absolutely no evidence of uh, any change in blood co coagulation uh, f uh, or clotting uh, parameters, uh, and showed considerable safety. Uh, the other was a, a, a more detailed examination by Dr. Akram, published in the Journal of Urology, uh, in which they looked at all the clotting parameters. And this was in the group of advanced prostate cancer patients. And in the prostate cancer patients with advanced disease, they showed there was ongoing blood clotting taking place. The cancer itself was activating the clotting mechanism. Uh, and indeed, one of the causes of death of advanced prostate cancer is a blood clot. Uh, it's part of the disease. When they added the estrogen, the blood clotting risk dropped. Let that sink in. Not only did estrogen patches not cause blood clotting, they decreased the risk of blood clotting. So this is a complete red herring. Now, if you've got advanced prostate cancer uh, and you've got an estrogen patch, you may get a blood clot, but that's because the cancer itself is triggering blood clotting, but not the estrogen patch. Uh, there is not yet a single clinical trial that shows uh, increased blood clotting of estrogen patches in men with prostate cancer. In fact, the evidence shows a decrease in clotting and probably then, therefore, a risk of blood clots. Uh, so I hope this uh, helps clarify the issues of estrogen and hormonal therapy. Uh, in subsequent videos, we're going to delve into the role of estrogen uh, in advanced disease.